to welcome back Carter Bitsby Trippin. So let's get right into this. So over the past like three weeks, I was on vacation this past week, but for the past three weeks, I've received quite a bit of email, direct messages from people just asking very basic questions. They were mining back in 2017 into 2018. They turned off their miners. They put them away. They have like maybe the BBT multi miner, you know, installed on there. And bottom line, nothing works. Like their Claymore's not working. They're really confused. They've tried to catch up with some videos. There's a lot of people talking about, you know, profitability and just different things with related to like Uniswap and all these other different functions on cryptocurrency, but not really any down to the basics of setting up miners and configuring them for new stuff like people are asking a lot of basic questions that i think need a video to answer and that's what this video is going to be i'm going to take you guys through some basic setup what you have to look for and what's really changed since 2017. you know your typical four gig cards have to work in what they call zombie mode if you still want to use those for ethereum which really extends it out to just a few more epoch levels about mid january to the end of january you'll be able to mine with them and get them all the way down to about 10 mega hash and then you're gonna have to turn them off things like that it's like some people don't even know that you can still mine with four gig cards and we'll get into just skidding the basics of your rig set up so let me know in the comments below after this video is done if it helped you out and let me know if there's something i missed let's get into it all right guys welcome back so we're gonna jump right into this we're gonna go imagine this being your mining rig and it will have some adjustment if you have multiple cards and we can get into that but the very first thing i usually do is you can go to google and you can look up bitcoin talk forum I, I like using Google because it kind of does a quick check to make sure that you don't hit like a, a dead URL, an old URL, if you typed it in wrong and you, you've you went to the wrong site. So just do a quick Google search on it. It'll take you to the Bitcoin Talk forum. And you scroll down here and what we're looking for is mining altcoins here. Bitcoin Talk forum has been around since the really the beginnings of collaboration around Bitcoin and some of the stuff that Satoshi did worked out with Hal Finney and some of the other crypto folks to kind of go back and forth like a message board and it's kind of the the gold standard when it comes to postings of new content on new miners updates to it people's experiences there's a, a wealth of information uh, on bitcoin talk and i want to make sure that you guys if you haven't been using it you should go out there and you can always cross reference and really what i'm looking at here is under the altcoin mining area this is where miners get posted so like if you're mining with amd cards right now a kind of a go-to is the lol miner it's up to 1.18 the people that post these miners actually post them on this form and update this original thread. So you can see this thread is up to 92 separate pages here. If I click on LOL miner, it'll actually bring up the page here and you can see some of the basics of how the miner works. So this is the kind of, again, gold standard. It'll explain what drivers requirements are there, some basic um, supported algorithms, change logs, which in software development, you kind of have your different versions and then what's changed in these versions. I know some of this stuff ends up being like a wall of text to people. And when I talk to people in general on just crypto mining, uh, you know, they're like, there's just so much. But yes, there is so much, but you also have to read a little sometimes. So in here, um, explain some of the new versions and updates and what I was talking about in right before we switched to this style of video about adding like four gig ETash, the ability to continue to ETash for about another month and a half using something called zombie mode, which really just extends it to the edge of what memory is on the card. And it takes a hit in mining performance for that, but with the prices the way they are, it still makes it to where you can mine and be profitable with some of the four gig cards. So here, LOL miners for Windows and Linux, you click this, it usually takes it to their GitHub. The GitHubs are good because this has verified post by hash. So whenever they update the software, they post it to GitHub and you have release candidates that are out there. In addition, you might have some more detail uh, on performance metrics here that you can see here when you're using the four gig mode here, you can see the degradation of how slow it will get. So something that's doing on Epoch 381, it was doing 28 mega hash. And now we're on, I think we're on Epoch 387 or about to hit 387 here. Um, it's your, your 28 
get mega hash four gig cards are going to go down to about 21 and you can see as it goes to these epoch levels that they switch they uh will will slowly go down to where it gets all the way to epoch uh 396 here where it's going to be like 10 mega hash and this is going to be sometime in february uh when it gets there but once you get this you can go and take a look and get the latest versions downloaded so as i scrolled up i noticed this saying the windows release would follow in the next 24 hours so and and this particular one right now they have the linux build for a uh 118 a for just linux right there that's why we're not seeing the windows there so let's go back to bitcoin talk and let's look at a miner that we can get updated right now so phoenix miner 5.4 c this will also work for your nvidia and amd cards here it also shows some of the new support for ethereum classic just went through its thanos upgrades anybody that hasn't been tracking etc has changed its algorithm so it's not eth hash it's etc hash so it can allow graphics cards of a three gig still working with ethereum classic now so if you have a three gig a gpu you can use it on ethereum classic with that uh, mining switch there but let's scroll down and pull down the latest version of phoenix miner so we're going to click that it's going to take us to mega it's going to go through and download and this will come to the folder you got to look at these versions here scroll down for the windows one and you want to double click it and it will launch a download of it takes a second for it you can see it up here running and then we're going to dump this right into the downloads folder here as a zip file now this comes right here and says that it has some browsers will will try to stop it for the brave client as it is it blocks that you can come up here and you can hit downloads and then in here you'll see the details under downloads and you can say keep dangerous file so in uh, Google, you'll have, if it comes up and says it's dangerous, you can hit control J, you'll see the same type of screen here. And you can say, keep dangerous file, keep anyway. And now we can go into the folder. The folder opens here and you can see it right here. Now, one of the things that I like to do here is I usually make a folder now called miners under the downloads. I keep that in there. And then under windows, you can come in and update the, the settings under windows security. So in windows security, security here for just the miners i would not do it to your whole download folder here you go to virus protection here you scroll down to virus threat management and protection and you want to come down here and you want to make an exception you can hit and add an exclusion you're going to go to a folder and you're going to go some miners here so you want that miner folder to be part of your your exclusion zone here so that way when you go to download something into it you can move that straight into there or when you're downloading and you're picking a location now you're going to want to put it into miners because otherwise uh when windows does its scan it's gonna it's gonna break it so we're gonna go ahead and extract all this and we're gonna extract that out here we go so now we got the 5.4 C version of, of Phoenix Miner. This is the latest version. Phoenix Miner gives you a couple here to start. If you hit ex, uh, where you can edit it, you can come in here, bring up your notepad. I personally like using Notepad++. You guys can download that online. It's free and it gives you just a better view and a better management view and the way it colors everything, just like any kind of software development kind of environment, like an IDE, an integrated development environment. It gives you that kind of id feel so in this particular one what we're going to leave that your different settings so one of the main things that you'd want to do for you personally is when you're in here and you're editing the miner your key piece is making sure the pool that you're going to be using is set up to where you know you're going to be tracking and your your wallet address so you have your pool and your wallet address are the two main components here we're not going to get into configuration just yet we'll get into that in a second but so let's let's find a pool real quick so we're going to go out and what i like to do is look up my Mining pool stats, right? You can Google that real quick. That'll bring you to mining pool stats. Now, if we go to Ethereum, we can see the distribution of the total network hash power. So total network hash power for Ethereum right now is setting at 283. That's what it's it's estimating that in totality for the entire Ethereum network right now, setting at 283 tera hash. Of that, that's known, or at least known sites here, 273 tera hash is known. So the delta here is really like the, the private pools, private places that are uh, not you know, just completely anonymous address, just mining straight to an address, no pool set up. Um, so there's not a huge gap here. Uh, a lot of the known hash power is to known pools. And that's for a whole bunch of reasons. And we'll have a separate video for that. A lot of it is, it, it, you know, it's a separate expense to run a pool. 
and to set up all that configuration and then you got to do all the pool management and stuff so it, it is easier for a lot of larger miners and stuff to to go to that not just mine for themselves uh with the way the hash power is unless you had an exorbitant amount of hash power and you want to take that risk a lot of miners just mine to pools to have that luck and that distribution to pay out uh, more often you can also see here is your blocks here so the last 100 blocks 30 minutes or so 25 minutes or so seven blocks were went to unknown mining pools and the rest of them the 93 blocks have went to known pools 20 of which went to spark pool 19 of which went to a ether mine and you can see you know that's very proportional to you know the amount of total hash power versus versus the total hash power here and you'll see that that if it, if it's really running in line, it's about 100% luck, um, meaning the amount of hash power that it has versus the total is getting the amount of blocks that it should get over that much time. Um, what I recommend is just picking a pool from here. You know, that way you ha know which one you're doing. We'll go ahead and do Ethermine. That's pretty straightforward. So if you click on Ethermine there, it takes you to that correct website for it. That's another reason why I like using that mining pool stats is because you can you, you can get to the different pools in case they change their URL and you're not going to get spoofed there because their their business is to make sure that that information is correct. So you have some information integrity there. So we go in here and if you hit start mining here, it gives you the basics on how to connect. So it was a long way to go about telling you how to get your miner configured here, but give you some baseline there. So we're going to be, and we're in the U.S., so we're going to be doing US, the US1mining.org here. We're going to copy that. We're going to go back to our configuration here, and we're going to paste that right in there. This set to pool, like pool two, this is if this one fails, it fails over to this one. It is okay to have that as like a, a you know, a backup. So you can see US2 here. Actually, let's do an undo here. And what we'll do is we'll set the undo. We'll set US2 since they have two locations, both east and west coast there. We're going to go back to that under pool two and we're going to just go right over this and we're going to set that one there and then we're going to use non-ssl ports for right now we're going to use just stratum there and the colon behind that the syntax has to be perfect if the syntax is not perfect then you're going to have issues we'll leave it to this mining address right now that's fine we'll do a little test here and give it to the uh, folks there and then we're going to get in here and just update this i'll just say this is a test rig and that way it's completed and tested there saving this and then we are effectively set up on this machine here we have the pool uh, normally I would go in there and change to a, a different mining address and that's a wallet that you can choose Exodus you can there's a whole bunch of wallets that you can download on your phone now and you would get your your address there um, this is your public address so you don't have to worry about sending it through email or anything like that it, it just all comes back down to individual privacy if you're trying to keep absolutely private on it you would you wouldn't send it through some kind of normal email or anything like that you would download it to your phone your phone's mnemonic encrypted and then you could type in the address itself there just to go straight into your miner we can actually close this and we could bring this up again but we're going to go ahead and just start this miner so i'm going to rename this one just to say eth eth and that moves it up here and then we can double click it and we double click it here you can see that it's going to run so we're going to close that out real quick because I don't want it to disrupt our recording here. But I, I have both a, a 6900 XT in this machine and a GeForce GTX 1070 in here to do the RTX voice for this recording. So that gets you going. That's the latest miner. You guys know where to go to get this. Again, for Ethereum Classic, if you want to do something like ETH Classic here, you can see it already has a pre-configuration for this. For the zombie mode, to get your, your cards working on that, you need to use LOL Miner for right now. I don't believe Phoenix Miner has a zombie mode on it. Only LOL Miner did, and the LOL Miner one is not available for Windows yet. I will do another video like this if you like this for lol miner when it comes out for windows and then we will do one for both hive and on simple mining i'm going to try to do these all back to back to back so tomorrow will be the linux version and then we'll come back to windows uh, for some of the configurations so hopefully this was a quick and easy one for you guys to go out there where to go to get your your downloads and get you going and i will catch you guys on the next one